right guys, this is today's project. We are basically gonna be cutting um, this road line all the way down back there to that corner and just trimming this back because uh, basically what's happened is all this uh, growth is growing out into this road which is actually a driveway to our house back there. And so we're just gonna kinda come up and cut all this back and then ease our way in through here at the bottom. Right behind here, I don't know exactly where it starts, it might be right there, but there's a ditch, there's a drainage ditch back in there somewhere. It starts, I don't know exactly where it starts, but it's in there. Um, and uh, it's just right off the road. So we're just gonna kinda cut this back to about kinda as deep as that oak there and just cut this back and cut all this from, from growing out into the road and just clean this up. So, how we are going to do that is with this bad boy. I picked this up last week, and uh, I've only I've only used it twice. I uh, when I hooked it up behind my office, I just turned it on to make sure the flow worked, and then I cut a about a 50 foot ditch uh, for a friend of mine. I didn't even film that; it wasn't wasn't anything worth filming. It took all of about five ten minutes. But uh, this is MTL's XC5 three blade excavator brush cutter um this is the 36 inch they also make a 42 and a 50 i believe i got the 36 because uh that's all they had in stock and then also um just it's and it kind of helps me because i got a job next week where i've got to work in between some some uh some big trees that are kind of packed tight together so this 36 might actually work a little bit better um I kind of wanted the 42, but this will this will work until uh, until I need that. So um, it's a three blade, three blade system under here, um, single plate carrier. So on this skid steer cutter, that's a dual plate carrier. So you have a plate here, and then you have a plate here, um, and then you have the the blade sandwiched in between. This just has one single plate with three blades. Um, it has the new hockey puck design here. Um, I'm not exactly sure how this works. I guess this is welded in here or fixed somehow um, and then it bolts on top. And then how you get to those bolts is they have a little little cut here, an opening that you just unbolt right there. You take that off uh, and then you just spin the head and line the bolts up with that little hole and then you uh, you can get these, these nuts off to change your blades. Um, they call it the XC5 because it is rated to do five inch material. Um, I've cut two inch material with it on, in that little ditch. Um, and it seems to handle it pretty fine. I don't know what flow I'm running out of the machine right now. I haven't really played with the hydraulics. Like I said, I just hooked this up. But it seems whatever the hydraulic settings are on the auxiliary seem to be working just fine. Um, it seems to have plenty of flow, but I'm gonna try to dial it in and make sure it is turned all the way up to the full 20 gallons a minute on this thing. But uh, it's been good so far a um, couple things i like about it it's notched on both sides so it can feed from both sides these blades stick out just a little bit not very just by hair um, but these are heavy duty steel blades very wide very heavy they're not like your bush hog style blades they're more of the style that are on the uh on the xct that i have for the skid steer so they're all heavy duty um, another thing I like about them is they're, they're angled here on the front too, not just on the sides, but also in the front, um, which is a little different from the ones on the uh, skid steer. They're only angled in on the two sides. So that's a cool little feature uh, as far as the blade design. Um, and also with these bolts too, like on the XCT, you actually, to, to change out like the carbides and the blades, you actually have to drop this whole plate carrier. On this one, you don't have to do that. Um, the other thing this has that the uh, that the XCT on the skid steer doesn't has is it has a as a brake and the hydraulic motor. So once you cut the flow off, the brake engages and it shuts this thing down almost instantly. So if you need to shut this thing down and get out and look at something, you don't have to worry about this thing just keeping on running, 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 running and spinning and waiting for it to have to spin down. Um, it's going to spin down almost um, within seconds, and you'll see that. Um, it spins down very quickly that brake kicks in um, so that's a nice safety feature um, everything seems to be well built um, thick steel all the way around good welding um, they have a variety of different mounting plates uh, for what you need 
Um, I accidentally picked up, when I went over there, I picked up a, a 161, a, a KX-161, which is like the older version of this. I picked up the 161 mount, and it's slightly different than this uh, this U55 mount, or the, it's actually the KX-057 mount. So instead of shipping it back and, and paying for freight and all that, I just went down to my welder, and he just used the bucket as a template and just cut me a new one, and we used the same plate. And he just cut the old mounts off, welded me on a new mount, good to go, and I, I painted it um, gray. I need to, I need to, I had to kind of do some grinding here, um, and I, I need to repaint it, touch a couple things up. But other than that, I mean, they have a, that, and that was my fault. I accidentally picked up the wrong mount. I measured it, and I was like, yeah, that looks, that looks right, and it wasn't. It was just slightly off, enough to where it wouldn't work. Um, but yeah, um, had to change out these heads on the Kubota because the thing was like seven years old six years old these heads so i just went ahead and changed them um so everything works good the only thing i don't like about this is when you get this thing all the way back these hoses and this is kubota this is with kubota so i'm gonna have to do something here this design doesn't work here with this uh, with these coming down this is rubbing this and it's it's hitting this needs to come out just a little bit to make this not rub here and that's with Kubota. This has nothing to do with the lines. This is the way this is plumbed here. I don't particularly like that. So that's gonna have to be changed. I may just need to put a spacer here. Take this off and maybe put a spacer here and here to widen this out a little bit. That should work. But um, that's one thing I've noticed with this Kubota. That's not well designed. So, but I, to keep it from rubbing, just to protect these lines against this, I put these, the hydraulic shop sold me these little covers here that I just zip tied on here. So she said they have 250,000 rubs um, before they wear through. So that should last until I can get that done. And it's just good protection. The hoses may need to be shortened too. They, this is the length that it came with. Um, so they don't know exactly what your length is. So it just comes with a standard length. And if you need to extend them or shorten them, you just have to take it to a hydraulic shop. That's kind of the way it comes with attachments these days. It just depends on what machine you have. Um, so but all in all it's been good so um let's fire it up and uh get to work
All right, guys, you'll have to excuse the wind. It's a little windy out here today. But yeah, this cleaned up pretty good. Looks real good. We'll walk all the way down it. I totally forgot my blower, but I had the rake, so I came back in here with the rake and just raked this edge really good. Got all that cleaned up. But uh, the homeowner actually told me not to mess with it, but because he's going to dish this whole road up because it's, it's kind of... Uh, got some ruts and stuff in it and that's why he wanted this cleared back so he can disc all this to fix this so this needed to be cut back but everything looks good um that cutter worked like a dream um the hoses are i got a couple little kinks to work out with it the hoses are a little long i'm gonna have the hoses short and probably about four inches and uh i gotta put some spacers on those mounts on the arm because it's rubbing when you tip the thing all the way back um the actuator there that goes around the arm that moves it is rubbing the, the lines there that go up the sides um so that can be fixed with a spacer a couple of kinks to work out but nothing major Get this big stuff up and through that over there there we go but yeah he's real happy with it we just rode down through here on the side by side and he's real happy with everything and uh we'll be back uh, he wants me to cut this back over here along this field edge we're going to cut that and then we're also going to come back in there there's a pond back there uh, there's a house right back there and then there's a pond over here and he wants me to clear out this front part through there so he can see the pond from his house so that's later um probably in the fall another we're going to do that in about a month um but he's real happy with everything and uh, i am too it looks real good still kind of getting used to, to running that thing um definitely got faster as i went further on kind of started getting the hang of it um but yeah you can see it made a nice little you know kind of overhang u-shape there so shouldn't have any more issues with anything scraping against the vehicles as they drive down through here everything looks good this this the water runs down this road because this field can't really see it but this field is probably close to two feet or 18 inches higher it round it gets way up than this road right here so all this water drains down on here and then it goes down this way and actually drains right about where those bushes are there's a culvert there that takes that water down into there into that ditch um so i mean yeah all in all, looks good. Wanted to give you guys an after shot of everything. So, I'm going to get the machine loaded up. And I got another little project to go do. Hopefully we can film that too. Um, as long as it doesn't rain. I'm going to go try to move a playhouse. Like a play like this, like a jungle gym thing. So I got to go run, drop off the excavator, pick up the skid steer with the pallet forks. And go meet my cousin. And see if we can't move a playhouse jungle gym thing we'll see i moved a chicken coop and it was bigger than what this thing looks like on photos so i think we'll manage i hope we're not moving it very far we're moving it in the same neighborhood basically just a couple houses down so i think we'll manage as long as i can get skits here to it so that'll be a quick little project i'll try to film it but this looks great i'm really happy with the cutter it's a really cool little deal um it ran, I see this took me four hours to do this. I don't know exactly how long this, this stretch is, but it took me four hours and about a half a tank of fuel is what I burned. And I was running about 90% throttle. So not quite full throttle. I didn't think it really needed it, but I was running pretty close. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and uh, I've got some more cutting work coming up with that. We got to cut the impound at the farm. So you're going to see a lot more of that thing. I'll get the drone out when I do that. We'll get some drone footage. We'll get all kinds of footage. I'll find some more places to set up the magnet. We're gonna have some fun with that thing. So you guys stay tuned. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. I will catch you later.